Afternoon, everyone. I've just finished polishing off the letter that's due to go home today, just to recap everything that's happened this week. And there's some key details in there about the changes we'd like to make with face coverings on Monday. And I just wanted to produce a little video just to go over some of those key points and outline some of the rationale. There's lots that's happened in college this week. I'm really proud about uh, how students have settled in, but it's really clear that we just need to tweak one or two operational matters. The year group bubbles are functioning really well. It's been fantastic to see all the years in uh, and being able to access their lessons this week. Uh, Mr Steeles has done an amazing job with the timetable to make sure that we can access specialist rooms. So when I taught year eight this morning, uh, even though they're based predominantly in the Bedford block, I was able to teach them over at Littleport. That means we can access those key rooms. And we can do that really well in terms of how we move the students around the uh, the corridors and the, the outdoor areas. The break arrangements are working really well. I think the students are enjoying the chance to mix socially and the staggered breaks means we can manage those numbers very, very well. We're increasing our hand gel stations in the classrooms, but we are really grateful for parents who are able to send their students in with, with gel dispensers. It certainly eases some of the pressures that we're facing in terms of the, the increased costs of coping with COVID. We moved last week to asking students to wear coverings, face coverings on the way into uh, college and the way out of college. It's certainly clear that the sevens and eights uh, and the majority of nines have picked that fantastically well. We've got a number in year 10 and 11 who are who are using those coverings and it would be great if over the next week we can see more of those students wearing face coverings when they come in into sight uh, and it will need to because we are we are actually going to change our provision next week and what that's meant is that the confidence is such that we've had 98 percent attendance this week from the students which is way in excess of the number that the Prime Minister was reporting in his briefing a couple of days ago and touch wood at the moment we've had no staff illness which even though you'd think at the start of term you'd hope isn't always the case particularly when there's a bit of a cold going around at the moment uh, but touch wood thankfully at the moment we've got no issues with with potentially staff illness and that's not the picture that we're seeing in in some schools even locally we had our first fire drill yesterday with social distancing and it was uh, it was fantastic. I was really thrilled to see how well the staff and students managed that. We managed to get over a thousand students out onto the Astro pitch safely and socially distanced. So we were able to really get them to to embed in their minds where they need to be. Should we need to evacuate the premises with a great deal more urgency? We're confident that the students will be able to do that and still respect those social distances. We took this picture yesterday. You can see that the year sevens are in their form groups, but they're also lined up in a whole year. So they're able to do that because of their year group bubble. And then we had a number of metres distance before the year eights go in there due to group bubbles. Uh, so they've got the year eight all the way across the line. There's a distance here to year nine, distance here to year 10 and the year nines were positioned late, the year 11, sorry, positioned when they came, came out here. Uh, it took a while, a good half an hour, but the students were exceptional uh, in terms of their conduct and their quietness. And it meant that we were able to do run through those expectations fantastically well. But for as much as we've had a fantastic week, we do need to be mindful that the situation is changing, you know, without wanting to create any panic. We do need to be pragmatic and realise that the infection, infectious rates are rising, uh, both nationally and locally, that there are changes to the group numbers from Monday that the government have, have, have issued and they don't directly apply to schools. But I think we do need to be mindful of the societal impact on that and how we can manage that within within schools and colleges. And we also need to adapt on the experiences within college on day to day and with the staff that we've got out on duty and the senior team being around, we're able to look at where we've got pinch points and then what we need to do to possibly adapt to that. And it's pretty clear now that whilst we're really happy how things are working, we do need to make uh, one more change. And that's regarding face coverings. And the reason for that is that even though the year bubble system is working fantastically well, in a way you've got 270 year sevens, and 240 odd year eights and a big number of year nines and tens and elevens when they empty out into the corridor they're fine in their year group bubble but if you're a member of staff who's suddenly in a corridor with 40 50 60 students uh, it does create a great deal of anxiety in terms of you know the students conduct themselves fantastically well but there are a lot of bodies and they produce a lot of breath and a lot of expelled air and i think that there's certainly a concern at the moment that whilst the students won't necessarily suffer from it from any infection they can certainly uh, be a vector and it's how now do I 
and try and maintain those objectives of being a, a COVID secure environment. So what we'd like from Monday, and we really need your support with this, is that students wear face coverings as they come into college, they keep them on as they go into their zones and only remove them when they are sat in the classroom. And that's with the obvious caveat that we have a small number of eight students at the moment who uh, do have permission to wear coverings in the classroom. I want students when they leave a lesson to put the covering on before they leave the classroom, keep the covering on when they move to their next classroom and then remove it when they're sat in that classroom again. I also want students to wear coverings from the lessons to their outside spaces. I don't want the students to take them off as soon as they get out of the classroom and think, well, I'm going on my break now, so I don't need to wear it. They're still going to mix in those corridor areas. And it's really important that students keep them on until they get to their outside space and then they can take them off or where they go to their inside dining area and then they can take them off because we can socially distance when they're in those areas and the staff are able to, to keep themselves at a distance away and the students are able to mix because they will be in their year group bubble. So I wanted to be clear that coverings can be removed when they're on their outside break, or when they're outside the college and not in mixture with other bubbles, but it's really important for all other times. I don't want students to think that if they're going from one classroom outside and then indoors into another classroom, I don't want them to think that they can put their mask on, off and on again, because obviously that frequency of changing really doesn't help uh, the issue either. It's really important that we just move to this model where we're wearing them uh, as an act of protecting those who are around us. And I mentioned the objectives. I mean, clearly uh, our main objective is to keep the community, not just the school community, but the wider community as safe as possible. And to do that, we need to try and break these, train, these chains of transmissions. We've got over 1300 students on the college site uh, and we need to do everything humanly possible to make sure that we're not responsible for any transmission that then goes on to affect the community. I also obviously want to make sure that the staff are well and able to teach in person or remotely if we need to look at some form of restrictions in the future. The coverings do reduce the droplet transmission. And I know that opinion is divided and I know that we could take the line and say, well, technically the students aren't using the gel and putting the mask on and then using the gel and taking the mask off. But I think we just need to be pragmatic and realise that wearing a covering will reduce in the droplet transmission. We're entering a stage where soon the, the instance of cold is going to go up. There's an instance of flu that will come up as well as we move towards the colder months. And we're going to see an increase in this in the, the possibility of coughing and sniffling and droplets. And the coverings do reduce that transmission. It's really important that students wear these uh, in the corridors and when they're around other people and get into the habit of keeping them clean and washing them so they don't just become uh, soiled ham hankies because of uh, frequency of use. But the coverings themselves are not just uh, the solution. We still need to encourage the social distancing inside college and outside college. It's really important the students wash their hands regularly because the soap and the gel is, is proven to have a real a detrimental impact on the virus. And it's really important that we remind uh, the students about the importance of catching coughs and sneezes with tissues and we, that catch it, bin it, kill it routine to make sure that uh, we, we, we try and conduct ourselves with the best hygiene possible. I, I know that there are some people who are going to be delighted by this, and I know there are also some people who are going to be concerned about the move to coverings. Please understand we're doing this with the intention of trying to keep everybody safe and everybody open. Nobody really likes using the, the face coverings, um, but I think it's, it's, it's something that's really necessary now as opposed to at the start of term in order to make sure that we stay as healthy and as open as possible. I really thank you for your patience and understanding with this and I hope you have a fab weekend.